I've been using the BA2 Plus financial calculators for more than a decade now. Actually, in 2014 is when I bought my first calculator. So I figured I would go through the most commonly used buttons and features and functions that I've seen in all of my years using these, including uh, finance bachelor's programs, uh, accounting classes, finance master's programs, CFA, FRM, certifications like this, anything that requires the use of this calculator. There's certain things that are used quite a lot. And so I've actually got my original calculators I got this one in 2016 so this is the BA2 plus professional it operates exactly the same way as the BA2 plus which I got this one in 2017 so these are eight and nine years old and they're still working perfectly as they did when I originally got them so on my website I've got articles for the examples we're gonna go through today so if you want to learn about some of the functions we're using this way you can go and I'll put some of these links in the description or the pinned comment of this video let's do a basic time value of money example now throughout this video video I'm going to be using this classic BA2 plus calculator but it doesn't matter if you're using the BA2 plus professional both of them will work the same way and so you can click the buttons in the exact same order that I'm clicking them let's do an example with the functionality of this calculator that I think has gotten the most use on my calculators over the years which is these five time value of money buttons which is going to be great for bond and loan calculation so let's consult this this practice example. So the, our scenario is that we want to retire with $1 million in 30 years. So if you can earn 7,000 annually, how much should you contribute each year to basically end up with 1 million in 30 years? So we're going to clear out anything that was in there with second clear time value of money. And then now we're going to start putting in our inputs. So we know that we need this money in 30 years. So we can type three, zero, and then N. And then we see N is now set equal to 30. And now we know that we can earn 7% annually. So we'll type seven, and then we can hit this IY key, which will set it to interest per year equals 7%. You'll notice it doesn't say 0 0.007 this is in percentage so just the whole number seven means seven percent now uh, we're starting with nothing right so because we're just contributing each year so our present value PV we would want to set equal to zero so we'll click zero and then we'll click the PV button now we have PV equals zero we also know that we need one million dollars in 30 years so that will be our future value so we'll type one zero 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 that's one million then we'll hit fv that's what we want to have in 30 years we want to retire with one million so we have put in four of these five time value of bunny button we did the n interest per year present value future value the only one we haven't touched is payment or pmt so this will tell us based on all the other inputs what will make everything uh equal uh, so we'll hit compute and then payment and then we find that if we wanted to have one million dollars in 30 years by contributing every year uh, at seven percent interest we would have to contribute uh, negative ten thousand five hundred eighty six dollars and forty cents meaning that's what we have to pay it's a cash outflow that's what the negative indicates so in our previous example, we knew the other four inputs and we solved for payment, but we could just have easily have solved for interest per year, present value, or future value. So once we know for the inputs, we can get any output, it's just typically N wouldn't be the one you're solving for. But let's say just a hypothetical example of a bond where we're gonna buy a bond today that is a 10 year bond. So we could put 10 is equal to N, so 10 and then N, and then we're trying to figure out what is the interest rate of this bond given that we know we're going to pay one thousand dollars today so we'll do one thousand and then we'll hit this plus minus to make it negative and then we'll hit pv so that's a one thousand dollar outflow then let's say at the end of every year for the next uh 10 years we're going to get a 80 dollar interest payment so we'll do 80 and then payment and then let's say that this bond at the end its principal value that pays back is one thousand so we'll do one thousand and then future value now given that we're you know paying a thousand getting a thousand and then 80 every year we should be getting eight percent interest per year but we can just confirm that by hitting compute 
and then interest per year is equal to 8%. How would we solve for the price of a bond today or its present value given some of the other inputs for this bond? Well, if we have N interest per year payment and future value, we can come up with the present value or what we would have to pay for this bond today. So let's do an example where we assume that we have an eight year bond. So eight is N the number of years that has a 6% uh, interest per year or yield to maturity. And it has an $80 coupon payment that it pays annually. So let's do 80 for payment. Now, what should we know already? If the payment is greater than the the interest rate, right? We had 6% interest, 80 payment. This bond should trade at a premium. So its present value should be worth more than its future value. But let's just test that logic. So let's say the future value or the notional that the bond pays at the very end of its life is 1000, so 1000 FV. Now we can just compute for present value and present value should be greater than the future value. So we'll do compute and then uh, present value and we get negative $1,124.20. So we would have to pay that much today to buy this bond that negative represents the cash outflow and because we're getting a greater payment or coupon rate than the interest rate we better pay more today than the balloon payment at the end or the future value now let's calculate future value of a bond using the ba2 plus financial calculator and let's assume that this bond only has a five-year life so we'll do the number of years n is five five then n now we have to put in the annual interest rate or the yield to maturity. So let's say based on the risk of this bond, the market is demanding a interest per year of 6%. So that's the required rate of return. So we'll just do six IY. And then let's say we can look at the market price of this bond right now and just observe that the current price is that it's selling for $957.88. But because we're trying to uh, buy the bond, that would be a negative cash outflow initially. So let's hit this right here to make it negative. And then we'll hit present value or PV to lock that in. And then finally, we need to put in the payment. So let's say that this bond receives a coupon of $50 per year. So let's do 50 for payment. Now we know that the interest rate or the uh, required rate of return was 6% per year. And we know that the payment is $50. So the payment is actually less than the interest rate. So the payment is actually less than the interest rate. So this bond should trade at a discount, meaning that the present value or the absolute value of the present value should be less than the notional value or the future value at the end. So let's confirm that. So we'll do compute and then future value. And we find that this bond is going to pay out a notional at the end of 1000. The price of it today was only $957.88. So this bond is trading at a discount because the coupon rate is lower than the required rate of return or the interest per year. Let's work an example on the BA2 Plus where we enter cash flows of a project, find out the net present value, NPV, or the internal rate of return, IRR. So in this example, we're going to assume that we are investing $7,000 in a machine right now today, and then we're expecting a series of cash flows into the future. So we can see the series of cash flows right here. Year one, 3,000, then we want uh, four more years of 5,000, and then a final year of 4,000. So now let's go ahead and go to the CF function on the calculator. I'm gonna hit CF and I can see I already have stuff in there from when I did this before. So you might see uh, a non-zero value. And if you see that, what you should do is hit second and then this clear work. So we wanna get everything out of that worksheet so that we can start from scratch. So now we see CF equals zero. That's the cash flow of today is equal to zero. So now we need to put in our initial $7,000 investment. So let's do seven, zero, 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 and then negative. Negative represents a cash outflow that we're going to pay. Then we'll hit enter to lock that in. And now we see the equal sign, it's locked. So now if we hit this down arrow button right here, we're going to see cash flow at time one. So we said that in year one, we're going to have a $3,000 cash flow. So that's going to be an inflow. So we don't make it negative, we keep it positive. So we do 3,000 and then enter, we see the equal sign that is now locked in. If we do arrow down, we see F01, which means that the frequency of this first cash flow occurs only once. One, which is perfectly fine. Now let's hit the down arrow again and we see cash flow two, CO2. So we said we're gonna get $5,000 now for four consecutive years. So we're going to do 5,000 
enter, down arrow. Now we see the frequency of that second cash flow, right, that uh, $5,000. And we're going to get it years two through five. So that's actually four years. So let's type four and then enter and then hit the down arrow. And now we're looking at the final cash outflow that's going to happen in year six. So this is really our third cash flow in this series. And so now we're just going to do 4,000 and then we'll hit enter and we can arrow down and see that that happens only one single time. So if we think about what we're really seeing here, I'm up arrow going all the way to the top. We're paying 7,000 the first year, negative cash outflow. Then we're receiving 3,000 one time. Then we're going to receive 5,000 four times. And then finally, we're gonna receive 4,000 a single time. So now we can figure out based on that, what is our NPV and our internal rate of return. So now let's scroll down. So we're going to use all those same numbers. So for the NPV, we can now just hit this NPV button. So I hit NPV and we're going to enter our required rate of return. So this is gonna be based based on the risk of this particular project. Let's say for this project, we demand a return of 20% annually. It's a very risky project, so we can hit 20%, enter. Now we'll hit the down arrow, and we're just going to hit compute. And that tells us that our NPV for this project is $7,625.99. So that is a positive NPV, so that means we would want to accept the project. Now let's do IRR. So all we need to do is hit the IRR button, and then this compute. And so we'll find find that the internal rate of return, which makes the NPV zero or us indifferent to this project is 55.63%. And because the IRR of the 55.63% exceeded what we put into the required rate of return in the NPV sheet of 20%, again, we would want to accept the project. I hope you enjoyed this BA2 plus financial calculator tutorial. If you're studying this stuff for a CFA exam, then I can help you out with 25% off of one of the biggest CFA prep providers uworld that has my own video lectures featured using the link in the video description or the pinned comment below.